So Antonio, first of all, congratulations. Really love this movie. And Super Mario, what a character. Yeah. It's funny because obviously we lived this whole event. I remember watching it on the news. But to humanize these people and to understand who Super Mario was, was pretty cool. Talk to me about bringing him to life and bringing him to the world. Well, first of all, you have to know that you don't have any specific time in the movie. Um, it's the story of 33. And so, you know, when I talked to him and I, and I got to, to, to meet with him, the guy was is so rich, you know. I mean, he's so explosive is the word that may define him very well. And immediately I, I understood, oh, my God, you know, it's, gonna be, it's not going to be possible to bring everything that this guy has given me into the character. So uh, it was kind of frustrating in a way because he's, as I said to you, he deserves a, a, not a movie, a TV show <laughs> just with him. You know, but um, so that's one side. But then what, what I tried is just to actually uh, take from him, you know, the juice of what was his whole entire, you know, the, the map of his story down there emotionally, uh, uh, fundamentally, you know, and how he was a hero and he went to be a villain and then he has to be humble and ask for apologies and be part of the group again. How he was, um, you know, capable with his faith to uh, drive everybody else behind his back against all the odds and believe that they are going to get out of there. And how that, in a very strange way, you know, is parallel to th other faiths that are happening out there from wives, from sisters, from politicians who decide to be human beings suddenly and keep going going against all the odds with all the technicians says this is not going to happen this is not going to happen <laughs> so uh, you know all of those things that concoction you know together this kind of uh, thing is what interests me about the movie not only just the, the personality of Mario but the whole entire story you know, one of the stuff. scenes I loved that last supper scene is incredible yeah. when you guys were filming that I'm such a geek about this type of stuff talk to me about filming that because I'm assuming there's a brotherly bond that gets formed while making this movie. How does that get reflected into that scene? What I did, I asked permission to, because it was, it's not a talking scene. Exception of somebody who says, Mom, or something like that. But, but the rest, we are quite, you know. At my moment, I asked permission to my director to use music. Um, and, and, and I asked her to please don't tell anybody on the table that I was going to do that. And she said, of, of, yeah, sure. So I took a piece that I love called Oblivion from Astor Piazzolla, who is a, was a bandoneist from Argentina, Oblivion. And I played it. It's very emotional music. And he hit everybody <laughs> right on. <laughs> and so, um, you know, sometimes I do these things. Of course, that, the music is not in the movie anymore. It's, and I think it's classic music, what she uses, and stuff like that. But I use things like that eventually when I can, and I have the permission of the director, of course, you know, in order to uh, find emotion, and, um, and I did it like that. 